They call these the therapy sessions, Moan. <laughs> We're supposed to be providing a service. <laughs> DK, I might need a little therapy today, man. I might need a little bit. Uh, that was, uh, as some people say, terrible. In, in the words of Charles Barkley, terrible. Either way you look at Ooh, it, it was bad that's ball. That's good. Was that's that good? A, that was a good Charles Barkley. That's all yeah. my southern dialect anyway, right? The terrible. You see what I'm saying, man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, Lee, uh, I've seen every suggestion known to man about all things that happened last night. What's the answers for what's supposed to happen after a loss like that? One thing is, if it's one bad team loss, yeah, all right, I can, I can talk you through that. Two bad teams lost. Um, that's hard. That's a hard one to stomach, DK, especially when you have a guy like Juju Smith Schuster that pretty much gets off in that game right there. And back to back weeks of former Steelers having their way, DK. Um, they did. They are the first team the Steelers are in NFL history to lose back to back games to opponents who were at least eight games under 500. Um, so other than that, a dubious achievement. Look, I mean, we're going to joke about this today because, you know, life proceeds. Okay. Yeah. But, but this is, this is bad. Okay. Yeah. And let's not pretend otherwise. We're going to talk about, as Kane McDaniel points out here, you know, <laughs> the Mike Tomlin situation. We're going to talk about uh, what Minka Fitzpatrick said to reporters uh, about wearing the black and gold. We have a lot to go over today, including people claiming that they're they're done. Ha! It's that, that, Friday. That, that's it. That, that's it. That they're done. I'll say this. You got your two worst losses out of the way in, in four days, DK. <laughs> At that... least they, they came quick, right? It's like hey. how it's like getting shots. Yeah. It, Just get it them to me as fast as possible, you know? Quick as possible. Like, I know I'm going to the vet. Let's go ahead. Like, my dog. I had to take him on Tuesday. Like, I know he knew he was going to the vet. Let's get him over with, DK. You want to hit this bell and just commence to having this conversation? Yeah, I think that would actually be a pretty good idea. Let's I got that. I got a feeling we're just going to spend some time with it somehow today, DK. Um, <laughs> there's one thing smiling. There, that's it. The only that one. Work? That don't work? I uh, don't work. We'll see. This is the Ramon Foster Show. He's Ramon, 11-year starting guard in the National Football League. He's in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. All I do is drink coffee and settle for substandard desserts across the street. You know what? Substandard? That is first-class stuff you got over there, DK, and holding on to, man. They didn't even put it in a regular bag. Look, I got it. This is the way it's packaged to them. <laughs> you know what? You'll be all right, man. You tough. First-world problems, DK. Oh, that First world problems definitely qualifies. Uh, let, let's get into the Minka Fitzpatrick comments. Uh, for anybody who hasn't seen, uh, heard, or read them, basically what Minka did was to put forth, I don't know if it was a challenge or a criticism or both, but the equivalent uh, of it is it, it, it was a call out. Yeah, okay. Probably the best way to put that where. He says, in essence, that too many players on the team don't want to put the work in. They just expect to make plays and perform at a high level because they're wearing the black and gold. So, okay, one more one more time, DK, for me, please, because this sounds like a conversation I had in 2014-ish around that era. Um, one more time, DK, just for the people in the back, me being the people in the back, okay? Uh, all right. This is this is quoting directly from Minka. In order to see the fruit, you got to toil for it. I think too many people don't want to toil for it. They just want to walk out here and think that they're going to make plays and think that they're going to perform at a high level. I think we need to have more people who want to work for it, not expect it to be handed to them. This is the NFL. Nothing's handed to you. You got to work for everything. I, I, that's an emotional response proper response like damn near dk you tear up after hearing that because you almost think that the team that you love and where you left it it ain't supposed to feel like that ever 
it, it the expectation is supposed to remain the same. Like this was a very similar conversation that I had with guys around the 13, 14 era that we were in about look, the, the realization when people can bury the Pittsburgh Steelers, they will. Coaches included, front office included, drama, all those things, DK. When you when you when you put on that black and gold, there is a certain standard. I ask around the league. Go ask your friends on that, that have franchises in other other teams. I mean, that are you know fans of other franchises. Go ask them what does it mean for them to beat Pittsburgh. Like legitimately, a lot of them is like, man, that is a great win. You guys are the gold standard. And I think when guys come into that room as new guys or as free agents or young guys, you expect that it just flows. Like this is the way. Like you're walking into a weld oil machine. Sometimes it might just be what Rob says right here. This is like watching a train. It might be a train wreck inside the building. But as far as everybody being on the same page, you have to get to that point. Like today, I've, I've made up my mind. I'm not trying to convince you guys of anything you don't want to hear or don't believe or it's just foolishness. And we've kind of gone through this. What Minka said to me resonates so much because, again, I, I will always say this. Coach Tomlin does have to stomach some of this blame. It falls on his shoulders. And it's not one of those coach speak moments where this one's on me. No, no, no. This is the direct reflection of you on this one. It absolutely is. And I go to where if you listen to what Minka's saying, it almost sounds like the, the plan is right. Minka understands what the operation is. Right, DK? Mm -hmm. Minka understands what the operation is and what it's supposed to look like. From day one in Santa Clara, California, from day one, Minka Fitzpatrick was born to be a Steeler. We're not saying this today. We say this mm -hmm. all the time. Continuing the the Minka mini rant, he it, said, it, he said, this is the I NFL. Nothing's handed to you. You got to earn everything. I think the dudes just think that because they're wearing the black and gold that they're going to win games. And I think people need to check that mentality, make people realize that they got to earn that mentality and that they got to earn every single blade of grass, every single splash play and every single rep that they get out there. They've got to earn it. When he was asked if that mentality wow. could change, Minka said, I'm not sure. Wow. Wow. Wow, DK. Just because they put it on the black and gold, they think it's just supposed to happen. That yeah. ain't it. You well, instantly, like, I'm picturing James wow. Ferrier. Who, uh, James Ferrier is one of those guys that I just think of, which is funny because Ferrier came from another team too, but yeah. is an essential stealer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just that you just put the jersey on and you're just a stealer. Like, hell you are. No, hey, no. Hell you are. It, it ain't even close to that being the finished product. The product is, is when you go out there, there's a smash mouth mentality. There's a strain to actually win games because teams hold you, you wearing the black and go at a higher standard. We've seen guys walk on field. We've seen guys make errant mistakes that you just say, what the heck are you thinking? We've seen dudes look like they quit. Heck, we heard of one of them that did and got benched, DK. We've heard all of these things. Now, I kind of want to say, well, this because there's so much turnover. And I just saw who was it just say useless knowledge say, well, Ben is gone. Yeah, there's some of that that comes into play. But you got Cam, you got TJ, you got Minka, you got a guy in Patrick Peterson that's absolutely no better. Chuck Sikora for it, knows better. There's guys that's been told by guys that came before them what the expectation is, and they're not holding it up. Coaches included, DK, and it has to start with Coach Tomlin. Whether it's one of those, hey, let's evolve a little bit because the players are a little bit different, so I can't fuss and cuss at them the way I did the guys five, six years ago. No. Our standard is the standard if that's what that's supposed to be, DK. The fact that Mink is saying he don't know if it could be fixed, I don't want to call it tone deaf, but it really does look like he's pointing the finger in one other direction. Like, hey, either coach, you get it together or fire everybody so that we can get it together too. Like, it is – that wasn't – that was a very truthful, that was a very real, and it was a very, DK, self-aware response to a bad loss – to a very bad team against the coach that is you're now three and ten against. Right. We did mention that though, didn't we, DK? We did. I, I thought Pittsburgh should have won because they're the better team on paper. Screw having Bailey Zappi as a hey surprise quarterback. We knew Bailey Zappi was going to play. I will say that pass in the end zone was a beautiful pass over the safety. Gorgeous, gorgeous. 
Yeah. That you, talk play, about, you talk about to the tight end? Yes. Yeah. That play right there. Hey, where's a dollar? Tip him on that one, DK. Oh, actually, both of them. Yeah. Okay. T- uh, they, that was that was very, very impressive. I mean, that said, the Patriots have only scored more than 20 points twice all when season. Open and drive score? The what, whole thing. What are we talking about? Yeah. Right? What, what are we talking about? It's almost right seems, down the field. It's like Coach Klein and the coach on the other side over there with the, the, the way you look at the way Belichick treats Coach Tomlin at times. Three and ten, DK, that's ownership in a sense. You got to find your way out of screw the Brady effect. If you're really competing, like you have to say screw that. But I want to get back to Minka's point mm-hmm. again. Just because you put on that jersey doesn't make you a stiller. Like, yeah, you do. You drafted in. I get it. But the way you play is what makes people love you, what makes people fear you, what raises the expectation. I think you might have five to seven guys, DK, that are capable of saying, yeah, they could play in almost any era. Minka's one of those dudes. And when he's talking, you know you don't say a whole lot. We heard of Minka squabbling with players, teammates, fighting is what I'm saying. Can you imagine fighting, DK, to prove your point that, look, we need a little bit more? You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that is where it really rubs me the wrong way because you got players that know what it's supposed to look like and telling everybody in public, whereas you felt like this type of stuff should have been said in-house a long time ago about what the expectation is supposed to be. Like, the, the, the fact that you think you can just roll the ball out and team's going to roll over because you got a coach that's done whatever and this whole winning thing is supposed to be automatic. It's not. The NFL is a strained league. It's hard to maintain jobs in the NFL because if you don't, you find your way out fast, DK. I love everything that Mika said, man. Even so much, I felt like it honestly criticized the coaches more than it actually did the players. There's also that. And actually, that was one of the things that jumped out to me uh, about the remarks because who ultimately is responsible for that? I understand that veterans like Minka, like TJ Watt, like Cam Hayward, like a couple of the guys on the offense, like yourself when you were playing, like Marquise Pouncey. We were like, one. You, we couldn't go nowhere without the other, right, DK? But you would take care of, and you felt the responsibility to take care of it yourself. You didn't go pointing to coaches or whatever. So that also needs to be made clear to people here. He's not trying to throw a dig, so to speak. It's just that it ends up reflecting badly on the coaches. Okay. Um, we have seen issues related over the past couple of weeks. Well, I should say past couple of games, which have felt like weeks. Uh-huh. Issues related to effort. Okay. And that's, you know, that's not okay. If you think that's about where okay. this team was when that bus pulled out of the stadium in Cincinnati, you think about where this team was, the position that they were in. They were at a they were at a, an over eighty percent chance to make the playoffs. They had a chance. I'm going to say this out loud at the AFC's top seed. We talked about that just for a, for a second. We talked about it. Okay, that wasn't making a prediction. That wasn't just saying go bet on it or whatever. That mathematically, they left that building with that kind of a chance. And then you look at the schedule that they had, and right now they should be sitting here at nine and four. They should be a half game back of Baltimore. They should. They should. Mark uh, brings up a point. He asked a question real quick. We're already in the school. Let's roll, DK. It's Friday anyway. Uh, Mark goes, hey, Moan, do you think young players uh, respect or like Coach Tomlin so much that uh, – what was that, DK? He allows <clears throat> them to do certain things. Uh, I don't think that's it. I, I, don't, I don't think that they like him so much that they're just going rogue. I, I will say this. I think guys are probably either properly not prepared or they're just going AWOL whenever they get in the games. Like, they yeah. think they know better. One thing I talk about a lot is you don't need to cling to narratives whenever you have the reality punching you in the face like this, okay? They just got their clocks cleaned by the Cardinals and the Patriots. They just got their clocks cleaned by back-to-back 2-10 and 10 opponents. And we're still talking about stuff like this from Evan. The standard is 9-8, and eight, though. No, it's not. No, it's nobody not. talks about this. Nobody, nobody, nobody talks about this except angry fans. Okay? That issue never, ever, 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 ever comes up. And if I see or hear anything about national media, who cares about national media? They're not here. They're not covering the team. Why does anybody pay attention to anybody who doesn't cover the team? 
That never makes any sense to me here. Don and says some of the players are playing for the paycheck. Moan, could that be – I'm not making any excuses for anybody, but could that be the result – at least partly of so many new faces shoved in there because of these injuries. I, DK, that's always going to be the case. This turnover has been a lot over the last two years. It has. But again, when we mentioned, and I said this in my opening money log, DK, whatever you want to call that, um, there is a lot of newness. And sometimes a lot of change will take some of your core values out. The bigger you get and the newer you get, sometimes you lose that old stuff. But it's also on those leaders on that team. This and, and here's the other backfire of this too is it's just this: the league is continually getting younger and younger. We love every new young draft pick that comes in, but you got to understand teams are made of guys who are older in their careers, like myself, that kind of kept the team somewhat together. That that you have dudes that have roles on the team. Who are some of your just pertinent role players on this team that you can just say? No, you've had an in and out of kick returners. You had safeties in and out. You had linebackers in and out. You had an offensive line that's young at certain positions. There are new guys out from outside the franchise. I see a lot of people won't make some cold bench. Like, there is a lot of newness to it. Is that excusable, DK? No, it's not. But it is one of those uh, just points in, in the explanation of why it looked this way. It's a lot. And honestly, I don't know where the stability comes from. We can say this time and time again, by the time we get to the point to where young guys get old enough to compete with a guy like Cam, how old is Cam in that point? And then can a guy like Keanu Ben carry on what Cam's laid down to him? Who's after Keanu Ben that you trust to be a guy to carry on that legacy, DK? Not in this room. Okay, now let's go to linebackers. Who's at the linebacker position that can carry on what the standards of being a stiller is? No, but I will give a special shout to Landon oh, Roberts Elandon. for one hell of an effort last night. Remember that there's – when we talk about these things, we're not uh, – how does Mike Tomlin put it? Painting with a broad brush. Yeah. Okay? Uh, when you look at Minka going out there with a busted hand, when you look at Landon Roberts playing through an injury and just dominating and just taking people out, uh, that's, you yeah. Know, he came, he's new, but he plays the way you would expect Steelers to play. Uh, and, and by the way, I see a Kawhi Leonard, great, great handle name. So they said they're, they're not, they're, we're t they're star players, not support. I'm talking more about the supporting cast. If we roll out the dice, you know what you're going to get from TJ, Alex I. Smith, um, offensively. Hell, I don't even know DK. I don't know what I'm going to get from him. Everybody, and it just dawned on me. Everybody I named was defensive. No, I, I'll give you a name. Offensively? Mm-hmm. I got one for you. You gonna please surprise me? Oh, I'm gonna surprise you because I would also surprise the Steelers by bringing this up since they don't play him enough. Jalen Warren. It? Yeah, but he's got yeah. he's got he his his heart throbs like this when he plays football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's got all of that. He doesn't take anything for granted. He doesn't take wearing the black and gold for granted. No. Okay. He's not afraid to speak his mind. Uh, he's got, to me, he's he's a stealer. He is. Okay. I think the list is short on offense. I really do. It's very short. Okay. I, I'd like to give time to Broderick Jones on that side of the football. Um, I'd like to think of Mason Cole as being that guy, except his performance is his just dragging. It's just it, it, you got to have. It's got to match. It has <laughs> okay. to match. Yeah, it's got to match. And I'm going to ask you one other thing before we go to the before we go to a break. You saw Mitch Trubisky slide uh, shy of that first down in the fourth yes. quarter. Okay. Now replays are replays. Different angles are different angles. My own thought, and I could be completely wrong here, but I'm okay. sharing with you just the perception from the press box when it happened. I thought that if he stayed vertical, that if he kept going, he was going to die. You thought he was? Yeah, I thought he was going to die too. Okay, he had a, he had a pool of sharks around him. I'm with you. And it was it, it everything was closing in. So you either make the decision I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop dead here for the team to get myself an extra four inches or whatever. And maybe he should have done that. Maybe he went with some other instinct. Maybe some everything happens so fast, right, Moan? It does happen fast. And he was behind the line of scrimmage a good bit before he decided to take off. So his awareness of where the sticks were may have been cut it, it, short. It's not a set play. No. That's a really good point. It's yeah. not a set run. 
No, he was scrambling, man. I thought he was going to die uh, as far as getting hit, DK, but I also question and wonder, could he have gone head first and, 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 and try to get the first down? Because when you slide, the ball stops where you initiate the slide. You, you know who would have who, who would have gotten that first down? Who? Kenny Pickett. I'm just I, we can do this all day. No, we can. Okay, no, we can. That that, but at some point, a lot of this is about want to. A lot of this is it about is. understanding what the spirit is, what the standard is, and all that yeah. other stuff here. And this is yeah. Let's uh, let's take a little bit of a, a break here for thirty seconds, <laughs> and when we come back, we're gonna do the only segment. It matters. I'm expecting it'll be a pretty feisty one on this here. It is Rapid Fire Friday. That's Hey Mo. I'm finding it. There it is. <laughs> At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all new state of the art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. I like this from Calvin. Opening <laughs> monologue. Monologue, man. Calvin just might have uh, he created yet another new segment here. Uh, he has. We're saving that one forever. Sorry, Calvin. That one belongs to us now, okay? <laughs> Freeman says this was a rough game to watch. I hope the coaching staff gets modernized in size and concepts. That's a fair point to bring. Actually, a couple of fair points to bring up there because size and concepts are two areas where maybe the Steelers are lacking. We know they have one of the smallest staffs in the NFL, just nine uh, actual coaches. Yeah. Uh, concepts, I mean, I don't think anybody could argue that the Steelers are lacking in that regard either what's the solution mo by the way mike sullivan's play calling last night him and coach falcon was very sketchy i just want to throw that out there too i thought you were going to drop a three-letter word for their play calling um, no nah, uh what's the three word? okay well, never mind one, one of them starts to. with a so yeah cheeks <laughs> is what you're saying cheeks. it was cheeks <laughs> yeah. it, it was no not rhythm um and also, it almost seemed like Mr. Bisky started the game off too with the ability, with the idea that he was going to use his physical ability of running often. I thought he went to that way too soon. Uh, but yes, I, I will agree with you in that assessment uh, by saying they have to open up a little bit more. If Coach Tomlin goes into this offseason and doesn't realize stuff has changed, the idea that your offense is very young. Who's a pillar of this offense? Because, DK, you said something that it resonates even more to me is the idea that you love Jalen Warren. And I do, too. And a lot of this fan base does. And question a lot of the time, even though I've pushed back on the Najee versus Jalen narrative. But when you see the two, you realize there is a difference. And when it comes down to trying to figure out what works for each one of them, maybe your in-house guys aren't the guys that you need to be having. And how about this when it comes down to progressing this offense? Because the biggest issue of all of them, DK, is the offensive side of the ball. Historically, Pittsburgh is a very defensive, run-style, choke-you-out franchise. We all fell into the, to the, to the loop of believing offensively is how we win in Pittsburgh. But I'm here to say this, too. In today's NFL, the offense has to be on the forefront of all things you're doing. And if your defense plays as well as ours does, except for last night, um, then you win championships that way, DK. The reason Kansas City's alive and their offense is very stagnant is because of that defense that they have this year. They have a top 10 defense this year. Isn't and that their funny, offense huh? is a bonus, DK. And mm -hmm. guess what they are? They're number one in their division over there in the AFC West. Trevor Barnes says, Mitch is so frustrating, he wouldn't read the field for more than a second before running for his life. I didn't see that at all. No, I pushed I back on the that, opposite. Trevor. I'm sorry, Trevor. Uh, we, yeah. It sounds like Moan and I are, are agreeing on uh, to, to disagree with you. I thought, if anything, it was striking to see a Pittsburgh quarterback stay in the pocket. Me too. He, but he held it. He stepped up. Those are things you like. Now, now, looking at the All-22, it's not available just yet, DK, from where I watch it at. But I can't tell who was open and who wasn't open on those plays, though, either. Again, he stayed in the pocket for what we've asked Kenny to do. 
whether it's yeah. route concepts or whether, hear me out, the wide receivers just can't get open and was covered up. That's he held happened. onto the that pocket. That doesn't show on TV, Moan. The wide receivers were not getting open. Oh, he, he held and held and held and held, and they were doing nothing to get open. Also, okay. Um, and then when you look at which we've done today as a staff here at DK Pittsburgh Sports, when you look at some of the film of this, the all 22, and you see some of the laziness or the lack of follow through, we're right back to talking about the stuff that Minka was talking about. Oh, yeah, okay? where's the wheel? Where's the extra, where's the extra effort? Where's the, you know, how about getting on the field, George Pickens for, you know, lining up to yeah. avoid a five yard penalty. Uh, this is stuff that uh, I, 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 I just, I don't even know where to go with this when talking about the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, guys gotta go. There's a strength. Say what you want to about 84 Antonio. You never had to worry about that. Absolutely not. Never had to worry about that. And, and I, I had that one up right here, DK. I think ahead. A, a B. Never. St Steeler. Yep. Just a complete. I, I. No one wants to ever say good things about A B, especially Never. now in the post A B life. Okay, A B on the field, quintessential Steeler. Dude, karate kicked the punter. Yeah, he did for the hell of it. For the hell of it. <laughs> he did. And you know what, DK? He do it again. Cleveland against Cleveland. And, and, and that's the other thing. Like, think about what Minka said and what you've witnessed. Even with the troublemakers, when Mark Tables was out there, did you ever question him? Emmanuel Sanders? No. Juju? No. Although sometimes well, they were all, but they were all working at, at, at the later stages of, of Heinz Ward's career. So. Yeah. But but even still in all of those, man. But I want to go here just real quick to clear this one up real quick too, DK. So much talent from Robert. So much talent is being wasted. If they, can put, if they can't pull this season out, they need to blow it up. Here's a real pro tip too. The talent's always good, Robert. It is. You, we were looking for another tool. We got one in Keanu Ben. You were looking for another Troy. Mika's holding his own when it comes down to it. The wide receiver talent is there. The O-line talent is there. The, we got some missing spots. Maybe one more corner, maybe another safety, a trio of linebackers, maybe. Talent is always going to be there. I think it does come down to structure, play calling, scheme, and DK. I never thought I'd have to say this, but discipline. It does. I mean, in fairness, they only committed one penalty in this game. It was a five yarder, but they also had to burn a couple of timeouts because they weren't set properly. Um, there's. There's a there's a lot of stuff that's been going wrong, and I wrote a column today, Moan. I was up till about seven in the morning, <laughs> writing it from last night. Um, that basically said that it's in essence it's it's time, it's time for a, I saw it at a, a change at head coach. Uh, that I don't believe that he's going to be in the most literal sense of the term fired. Yeah, I think what you do is you work something out. You know, he's been there for too long to just be shown a pink slip and, you know, yeah. go ahead out the door. But that wasn't easy to write. I had um, this one saved right here from Cody. Yeah. It's essentially what it was, right? He said, uh, Cody says, this is unfortunately what DK warned of us, warned us of. If Kenny isn't the guy, if Tomlin is past his expiration date, it's time to strap in for a painful rebuild. That's a reality, DK. Now, what what happens from here? If he, again, to your point, do you give him the gold boot, a pink slip, or do you say you got one more to prove it and then we'll roll? I thought that's what this was. I thought that's what this whole thing was with the let's start over with the new quarterback and Tomlin telling everybody, you know, that this is, the, you know, the great challenge that he's eager for it. He's excited for it. And, it 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 hasn't worked. It's not going to work. You're about to miss your your time allotment. You're about to miss your window. Like you said earlier, yeah. with Cam getting older, TJ and Minka aren't going to be in their absolute prime forever. You can't wait another three or four years to develop no. some quarterback out of the draft. You'd have to go find yourself some sort of 
you know, who's the guy the Titans got? I always use him. Ron as Tannehill. That's it. You, that's it. you go, find, go find yourself a Tannehill or a Cousins or a Nick Foles or somebody, and you say, this is it. You know, we're, we're just – we've given up on the whole draft thing. It, not every – quarterback has to be a number one overall pick and whatever that's, but you're waiting three four long. years yeah um it's it's fascinating though dk the approach to how you go about this because somebody just brought up i'm still i can find this comment in a second i'm still scrolling but there's there's two ways to build and reshape a team uh one you fire your head coach and go after a very offensive minded guy or here's the idea um you bring in a oc that gets really good. It's got a reputation, but you also worry about that guy being posted as a head coach. You know, the, the reset on coach Tomlin's clock to me happened when he let go of Matt Canada, mm -hmm. because here's the thing you got rid of the one thing that you thought wasn't working. So you're still left with what he gave you. And on what he gave you, DK, you were left with two offensive coordinators. So <laughs> there's still a blanket DK of excuse to retain them. And that's what you run into. You let me know if I'm off here. I, let, I, I'm not about to dispute it. No, I'm just saying the blanket that you had to say, you guys suck. We're on see ourselves moving further. Um, the new quarterbacks being ruined. Uh, the coaches that you picked aren't working. I think it's time for all y'all just pack up and go. I think that left the building whenever you, whenever you let go of Matt Canada. And who's to say that Coach Mike Sullivan was ready to call plays? Like, what I'm saying is there's excuses built in as to why it won't happen. Whether Mr. Rooney and Omar decide to, we'll see this offseason. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing a bunch of calls for Mason Rudolph, there was, of course, a vocal chant for Mason last night. I, I mean, I feel like I know why. I'm not going to be speaking for the people in the crowd who generated the chant. It was loud. No, no. I mean, why okay. not play him? Because even I'm questioning why not play him. Well, go well I'm going to throw this back to you since you, okay. lived, you lived this life for a decade and change. Okay. And I got to be unbiased in my approach to Mason. Mason's my guy. Mason is your guy. However, you also yeah. know that Mason has been taking nothing but third, third string yeah. scout team snaps all season. Okay. At least since the preseason is since training camp, okay? He hasn't done any work, hardly at all, with the first-team offense. He hasn't done any work, hardly at all, with the playbook, again, since preseason. It is my belief, especially with how emphatically uh, Tomlin answered a question on this count last night, that there is nothing shy of injury that could get Mason into the lineup. Nothing. Wow, I don't wow. think it. I don't, I don't even know. I shouldn't say who, it. Who I, the hell I is Mason pissed off? Well, is it practical? I'll ask you that. Can you take a third a third string guy who's been? You know, would it be very, 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 very uncomfortable not getting live reps, knowing how to read guys' reps? Yeah, reps. Yes, knowing how to wide receivers, the handoff point, like all that does matter. Uh, I'll say Mason does know. The playbook, probably yes. as best as anybody, but you're right. The reps do matter. That cohesion of understanding where Deontay is and where Jalen Warren likes to take the ball and stuff like that, yeah, does matter, DK. But as bad as I saw it last night, my brother, I was thinking to myself, I got to see something from Mason because some of the throws that whether Mitch was believing in the wide receivers a little bit more or not, there were some throws that Mitch Trubisky made last night. I'm like, my brother, don't do this. Please don't do this. Yeah, there actually could have been. He, he was very, very fortunate to have emerged with one interception. Okay? Very uh, fortunate. And by the way, the wide receiver, the DB that got hawked down by Ezekiel Elliott last night, who was that on the interception? Almost. That was Michael Walker. He's a linebacker. Oh, I know. my God. You know what else I was asked? Where's the speed? No, nah, there was none. There's a reason he is what he is. That's you why. Know, he was an emergency guy. Where's the, but, but hear me out, even on the offensive side of the ball, too. I don't know how fast George Pickens is. I know Jalen Warren is the only one to break one yard, DK. He's the only one offensively to break one for the house. Where is the speed at, too, DK? So you're telling me we got to get bigger, faster, stronger. Faster, bigger, 
and stronger because right now we're getting bullied in almost every area. Well, and smarter and more disciplined and more focused on the, the opponent with the respect. The, the list is, it's longer than Santa's. Okay. It, it it's is. bad. This is bad. And as, as long as I've been covering this team, this is as bad as it's been. Look, you guys had your, your 0 and 4 start. You had London and everything else here. Does not come close to comparing this. I know it doesn't. Not at all. Like I, I went through that room at Wembley Stadium with you guys, and it was devastation. Okay, that 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 room was we is shocked. It was absolute shock. You could hear a pin drop wow. in there. Okay. And yet I'm looking around because if you remember that room, Moan, there were there were a bunch of walls there and you guys couldn't really see each other. It was kind yeah. of it was, it was it was made for soccer, obviously. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing Troy Palomalu and Heath yeah. Miller and Ben Roethlisberger and Ryan Clark. And I'm going, how in hell? But how you guys were taking it was so much more powerful, okay, <laughs> than, than the actual event. Yeah. Okay? That's yeah. not that's not this. God, dog, DK. And, and I, I want to go to Michael O'Malley's comment right here, too. Mm -hmm. Ben hid so much. There's a lot of truth in that. I think you look at what Belichick has going on in New England. Brady hid a whole lot, too. I think what you realize is when you got special guys – and that's why I always took up for seven. Go ahead. Let's be clear as to what we're saying when we say Ben, ben hid. It means Ben was hiding something. No, okay. no, no. Ben was not. <laughs> ben as, masked a lot. He masked yeah. a yeah. lot as far as bad games where you can pull out dubs. I had a Baltimore Ravens fan. Uh, I worked with one. Very adamant. Very strong at Baltimore Ravens fan. And he said that to me walking into work this morning. He said, you know what, Mo? He said, it wasn't an overly bad game. It's a bad loss. He said, but you guys, man, have been for so long, and he covered up a lot of y'all problems. And I was like, <laughs> dang. I said, dang. That's coming from an avid Baltimore Ravens fan to acknowledge that. So I say that to get to this point. There's a lot of people that, that, that hated what he was and the reputation that he had and how he played. But it's always in hindsight on how good a person was to you, right, DK? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people didn't realize – like, it wasn't automatic. Like, before I got there and he was slinging guys off of him to throw the ball down the field, that that's not just, hey, just because he's big. That's the will that Minka was talking about, that strain that Minka was talking about, and what it meant to be a stiller, too. So for all the people, and I'll say this, and maybe being one a year too long, who knows, right? He probably did. Mm -hmm. Um, But with all the ones that were ready to gold boot him out of the door, like, look what you're left with now and how hard it is to find that guy and find that level of play and, and expectation and also demand from the players. Like, everybody, well, A.B. said this and, you know, Juju said this and they, they don't like being this and being is this. Well, maybe it's because there was an expectation of how you need to play and what he wanted from the guys being around him. Peyton Manning was an ultimate prick from what I've understood. And Tom Brady is. Like, the ones that want to be great are very adamant about what they're doing. And so you look back in hindsight and you say to yourself, dang, we had it good. Yes, he did mask a lot of things. Like, there were times where guys were banging him crazy, okay? Hitting the ground, injuries, the ankle issues, the chest injuries, the elbows, and he still go out and play. Rico says this team that. has a handful of elite level players and several young, very talented players, yet at the point, we're just not a good football team. What will it take to get this team back to where it should be? What changes? Rico, as I wrote in the column today, and, and I'm going to attach the link to that column to, to, the, to the YouTube comments whenever we're done today. Uh, so much is so wrong from so many different directions right now that all of the octopus's tentacles basically <laughs> come back to the same head. Yeah. Okay. I think there's too much that's too wrong over too long a period of time to try to chop this up into little slices and assign it to over here. Cause I see a lot of that in the comments today. Oh, it's the wide receivers or it's this guy it's or it's that guy. Okay. It's all over. 
And that to me tells me that something systemically yeah. is wrong. Yeah. When I hear former Steelers, not just Moan, okay, I hear from Moan every day, but when I have former Steelers reaching out to me and saying, What are we doing? What is this? That's not that's not that's not my Steelers. Okay. Uh, what is this guy doing? How is that guy getting away with that? Who's not taking care of that? Eventually, there just becomes too much of that mm -hmm. for you to say it's just that player. Or why didn't Pat Fryermuth run out that route before the Jabril Peppers interception? Mm -hmm. Okay, because you don't think of Fryermuth as that guy, do you? No. Oh. Oh. But when it's when it's permeated through the whole system, you got to look at the very top, Moan, and the very top is Mike Tomlin. Very well said, DK. And it's it's two I want to get to real quick, DK Rico. Very awesome question. Um, but I want to address one real quick. Mr. CJ Jr., we talked about Colt. You know they're bad. They're terrible. What else can we say? He got to fix it. It ain't been fixed in over three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. That's how long this has been going on. Again, free agency will hit you real soon, and we'll see what happens there if you go draft another guy. Uh, it's yeah, that simple. Be, I think we're drafting a center. Okay. Well, I mean, it's either going to be a center or a quarterback. Yeah, that's the other conversation. And also right here, too, from David. Uh, to that same question that Rico asked. Hey, Moan, is it possible they need more vocal leaders in the locker room in addition to lead by example guys to vocally hold guys accountable? Yes and no, because where you are right now, it's probably tone deaf. It is. It's tone deaf. You know you're good enough to win, but trying to figure out how the heck do you do it? Yelling at them when they know they're bad right now? I'm sorry. I, I, okay, I'll say this. Take the approach of you yelling at your dog after he knows he's pooped in the house and it's a bad one. Your dog you, knows. Yeah, all the dog gives you is the obligatory guilty look. I'm sorry. The dog doesn't mean it. Dog's just sad that you're mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dog's yeah. just like, I really wish your mood would change. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm glad we can correlate that to animals because we actually relate better to animals than we do people when it involves our football team. Yeah, that is a great way of putting that, DK. <laughs> Just shut up. I know I'm wrong. Like, uh, it becomes tone deaf. Dog's like, all I care is that you love me. <laughs> you know? I, I really I, don't care about this steaming pile of crap over in the living room. I, I really want, don't. <laughs> I want to be good for you. Yes. <laughs> I swear I do. All I want is your love. <laughs> That's 4,000. We needed that comedic break right there. We needed hey, that. Hey, Moan, would Mike Tomlin's seat cool down if he hired the very best OC in the game? And the offense would be one, would be explosive and unpredictable. If, again, I said that a second ago. If you get an offense, you absolutely get um, the defense to carry on. Mm -hmm. why, why were we so excited in Pittsburgh S4,000? Because the offense was that good. The defense was a normal thing. Um, yes, I think it would, but to answer your, also ask that question, I'll answer it. Wh who is the best offensive coordinator in the game right now? Because if that guy is that good and there's thinking minds around the city or around the NFL that knows it, he's going to be a head coach. Probably this next news cycle, you know, black Monday hit. He's probably one of the first people you call, right? Yeah, Michael Walker is slow, says Chris. That's a heck of a scouting observation on your part there. <laughs> I mean, oh my every Lord. once in a while, you blow somebody up. Uh, I have one question that I want to ask you that was left here earlier today in the shop. They couldn't hang around. That comes from Brian uh, from Myrtle Beach. He says, hey, Moan, we had a bigger adjustment. with you. Who had a bigger adjustment with your retirement, your wife, your kids, or you? All of us. Together, all of us. Yeah, I knew I was ready. Uh, the conversation just had to happen. Um, my wife also understood that my youngest, my oldest, was going to middle school and having to play like real school sports. So the back and forth was a portion of it. Uh, he was becoming a teenager. Um, that played a factor in it, and um, just the kids in general. My wife was very supportive. Like, if I'd have gone, we'd have made it happen. But luckily, I retired when I did because the pandemic hit, and I ain't want to be around with that, DK. That knows stuff every day. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, that was uh, that was a, a different time. We also have a, a gentleman in here 
I'm going to give you the, the headset here. Jeffrey Elkins is in here from Denver, originally okay. from Duquesne. I'm going to pass this along to Jeffrey. Hey, thanks, DK. We'll head all the way up. Hey, What's hey, Moan. On? What's How up, you? Jeff? Man, I'm all right. How you doing, man? I'm good, my brother. How are you? Man, I'm all right, man. I listen every day, man. I really appreciate, you know, you and DK's, uh, it's like a, a fact-based show. It's not just hot takes yeah. every day. You and know, so, Jeff, when, yeah. we, when we did this, when we started this, I said, DK, it can't be fluff. I don't want to lie to him. And we got to talk straight with them. Like, we're going to have a good time. And the way we're doing it, we're not trying to be into clickbait stuff. If something goes viral, good. But as far as the fluff, I can't stand it because that ain't the game. That's right. You know? So, yeah. So, um, I came in for the Frisco game. We got our butts kicked. Oh, gel. And I came in for this game last night. Again, we got our butts kicked. And what it seems like to me is that every quarterback – has a he's like good against the Steelers. Guys are open, and when we play, it's like our quarterbacks are having problems. Um, it seems like we we run with they put personnel in, and you know what's gonna what's gonna happen based on the personnel. And I was wondering if you had any insight on why that is with with us. And it seems like Ezekiel Elliott looked good coming out the backfield, you know, and and our guys weren't, you know. Yeah, I, I tell people this all the time, and it, it sounds cocky. It sounds conceited. It sounds very biased when I say it, though, too. Like, wearing that black and gold means a lot. Like, you notice those, you notice those three colors in that name in almost anywhere, right? Like, yeah. and teams know that. I've had Coach Munch tell us, man, if we were 5 yeah. and, and 10 and we had y'all left in the season, if we beat y'all, we saved our season. Like, the expectation yeah. that we have when we walk on that field is essentially what Mika said. Like, you can't expect teams to just roll over. Teams want to beat you because of who you are. It's like somebody beating Alabama, right, in college. Or it's yeah. like when SC was really cranking with with uh, with uh Matt Liner and all those guys. Like, think about it. Reggie Bush, think about it. Linda, they wanted to beat USC because they were USC. And Pittsburgh players have to realize just because you're drafted or you come there as a free agent or undrafted free agent, you're not just the guy. You're not Troy. You're not Marvell Smith. You're not Ben Roethlisberger. You got to work for those things. So seeing uh, seeing New England Patriots guys like Juju get off, Ezekiel Elliott get off, Zaley Bappy, Z boy, Bailey Zappy, I had his name, Bailey Zappy, like that is a prove-it game to where they call their parents after you see us beat the Steelers. And yeah. our guys, and I'll say this too, the other side of it is, defensively we play a bend but don't break style. But here's the thing. You got to have enough playmakers to capitalize on moments of not breaking. And right now they don't have it. Offensively, <laughs> with DK and I just talked about this. Um, what what is one guy you strongly consider still or tight? Like there's some guys I think that'll grow into it. Broderick, Darnell, um, <laughs> dang, I'm drawing a blank. Pat Frymouth, I hope, Najee and Jalen. From there, I only name one offensive lineman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean. And we got to do something about Mason Cole, man. We got to draft a center. That uh, we were supposed that, to draft. I'm, I'm I'm so upset because we didn't draft Creed Humphrey. Yeah, we're supposed to draft Creed Humphrey when you have a Hall of Famer retiring. <laughs> you have Alejandro Villanueva retiring. Yeah. The Castro going away, yeah. and you have you have acts you know, got action at Creed That's Humphrey, and we watched him play in college all those years, and now he's one of the highest graded centers in the NFL. Yeah, you, you miss. They miss, but of course, a lot of other teams did too. Uh, it's a rough one. That was a rough loss last night. Yeah, it hurts. It I'm gonna did. be sick all week. Ah, uh, well, Sunday we'll see somebody else lose. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. I th hey, thank you guys, man. Yeah, for me thank on. you. Be safe, man. All right, DK. All right, Jeffrey. All right, man. You guys have a good one. I was Point State Park. Oh, it was great, man. We got good pictures. Down Took there. a walk down to Point State Park to the fountain. Oh, my. When they shut it off? <clears throat> the fountain's been off. It, it gets – it's like early November because they can't risk the pipes freezing because they're really old. Yeah, they got to flush them out. I got one I want to put up real quick. Brian Junker. Mike T just wants to be friends with the locker room. and Now, that's, now I don't believe that one. I can't subscribe to that one. Now, you see them having conversations and relationship with players, but to be friend – he, he know his job is on the line. Like, he has to understand it. He ain't a dumb guy. Friendship is built over tenure with people. Not necessarily just because I want to be cool with you. I did it already. Yeah. Yeah, DK uh, did it already. Yeah, she's showing me the question. I already asked it. She thinks I was negligent. 
yeah, Dolly around her schmoozing with people in the store oh, instead of. She's got a beret on. Have you seen her beret? I saw it behind the scenes, DK. I did now we got to put her beret. on here. Now we got to put her Come on. Come on in beret. here, Dolly. Yep. This, this is this is this okay is, here. This, this is perfectly fine. Yeah. You got to talk about the beret. Unbelievable. You Everybody's listen to really Prince. Miserable. They need to be cheered up by yes. this beret. You you listen to Prince? Yes. Do you have any raspberries to go with that beret? I don't. I have a red. <laughs> I have a red one, but I don't have a raspberry one. But oh. you know what? I I should. You I should. should. This, is, this is a bad hair day hat. That's a bad. Do you do that? Oh, uh, yeah. I wear a hat. Or I'll just, just rough it. Like, you know what, Dolly? Just take me as I am. I need one person to be happy about seeing me. Okay. And if she's okay with seeing me rough, good day. Oh, see, did you hear what he said? You no, didn't. No. But listen back, <laughs> listen back to the show and see what he said. That is some wisdom. That is how this man is going to be married for a very, very long time. Well, D DK gets on sometimes and doing his hair like that. So. <laughs> you do not know. You do not know when it comes to... One day I'm going to point out when he cut his own bangs. I'll be like, you see this? These are the bangs he cut himself. Well, do you ever see him going like bald, like shaving it over? No, but that would, I don't think that's going to go well. Serbian heads are not smooth. <laughs> Dolly, that is so bad. It's, it's I love fact. it. I love it, Dolly. That is it's awesome. A, I'll keep them. It'd right. be all right. What? There we go. What am I? <laughs> here, here. I'll, I'll put them back on so you guys can close out this silly show. No doubt, Dolly. See ya. See ya. Did we make anybody happy? Uh, I think I helped make her happy for you, okay? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, oh, that's that's all right. <laughs> you know, Casey says you has a you have a lumpy head. What the oh, hell did you guys talk about the minute that you ended up with a lumpy head here? She was talking about your bangs, how you always had to straighten them up and everything. I was like, well, DK shave his head one day? She was like, no, nah, Serbians have a lumpy head. <laughs> I have no idea what any of this means. However, <laughs> however, um, I, I can say that after this little thing here, we're going we're gonna to come back. And uh, talk about one thing I've been saving here for a bit. Okay, let's do it. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, if the show felt like it was all over the place, even more than a usual Friday episode, that's because this team's problems are all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be very hard for us to focus on a specific problem or a specific issue. That's why Minka's comments were such a perfect way to open the show, Moan, because what Minka's talking about touches every corner of that room, doesn't it? Every single bit of it, DK. If you heard it, you should feel disrespected. You should feel like I'm not doing my job. Like Is he, he talking pierced. about me? Is he talking yeah. about me? That's Is the question you're asking. Me? Yep. That's the question. You, uh, is he, uh, am I included? Yes, you are. If you got to ask that question, yes, you are. Because you have no room to say anything or even think anything because you know what he is. Because he built himself in a certain way, that he carries himself in a certain way on and off the field, that he leaves himself beyond reproach. Yeah. So it, it has to be someone like Minka saying it. It does. You know, or like a right. TJ or whoever. And he's right. He was so right, DK. And here they are with four games left. And it's the Colts, the Bengals, the Seahawks, and finishing up in Baltimore. Okay? Yeah. Um, this team's not making anybody's playoffs. Not anymore. It, I don't care what that record says. I don't care. You know, this is this is bad. This is bad. And my belief is that it's bad. It's going to be bad enough to force Art Rooney to make – the changes that are necessary that he sees that are necessary and he's going to have to step way out of yeah. his comfort zone. He's going to have to go to areas where his dad did. Yeah. 
Okay. Yep. Um, it will be DK. Um, how it happens when it happens, I think it's more it's it's closer to happening than it ever has, DK. Is that fair to say? It's at this moment, at this as moment. we are speaking, uh, it is it is there. It's 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 in play, and I think it might be. You know, we should do a show on this on Monday. Okay, how about this? You you know how you're always writing down whenever we come up with something here. Here it comes. Hold up, let me get my sharpie out. Ah, uh, red, because we're all seeing red right now. <laughs> You, you, you and I have had the conversation, and well, we've even touched on it in, in fragments on the show over the years, as to how long Tomlin wants to, wants to stay around. How much had, cra- how much crap does he want to put up with? How much longer does he want to do it? How much would he benefit from the same kind of time off that you just described, or the time to to invest in your kids and everything else at a pivotal age? Uh, you know, like his kids are. Uh, and family and everything else, sure. okay? Because you, you know the man, and you know the man on this subject. Yeah. And my uh, belief is that it won't ever come to a firing. It's going to come to a, a coach. What's going on here? His daughter just committed to Georgia. That was public. So all his kids are either in college or close to graduating. And when you lose, when you lose the second child to college, or the, the, the last child yeah. there, yeah, but when you lose the last one to college, as I just did, all of a sudden, like when he calls my when my son calls from Philly, it's like, oh, hey, look, hey, he's calling me. It's <laughs> great, man. This is awesome. He remembers who I am. I love yeah. it. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Maybe this is this is the way that comes, and this is where this is what actually made me think to bring this up with you in this segment was Antoine sent this in because Mike Tomlin stopped caring as he lost his passion for the game. Uh, again, we were talking about that his conduct in the press conference. Nothing wrong with it. But you could tell that there was just, you know, nothing he could do. He up against the wall. Yeah. What answers does he have? None. Like everything that you've tried has been like tried and true and done. Like they did a double reverse to the right and left. They did <laughs> double pass. They did everything you wanted them to. Mm-hmm. Defensively, same thing. Like get guys healthy, get them back, sit guys down, like start guys, like everything. There is absolutely no answer, DK. The rest of it, there's no answer. Either you win or you lose. And so Monday, let's it's written down. I have it. We've saved it. Uh, but also it was this part of it too that kind of got me, DK. Before we finish it out, um, you want to hit CT real quick too? CT just makes a point here. A lot of fans want Tom on gone, but the big question should be are fans ready for what comes after that? It's not like he gets fired and automatically championship contenders uh with a new coach. That that's true. That would be a process unto itself, as it always is, with a major change this if that were to happen if. probably hall of fame coach that you got to replace yeah and, and you see what it looks like replacing the hall of fame quarterback not to say it's the impossible task um but that is ct a very valid and i think a lot of his fan base could care less how long it take they just want to see what it'll look like in 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 hindsight um but shout out to your favorite barber also, DK. And this one was pretty good. We didn't even go over it. I thought this could have turned the game around. Two goes, hey, Mon, was the false start late in the game on Coons legit? No. But you know what I think did happen? You got out hustled by a hustler. That play shows up often. That play is not practice. That snapping of the head, you can draw defense off sides. Oh, that's and, what they were going for. I mean, Christian Coons told us afterward he that's they were going for that was a count of two. We were all supposed to do it, and they did it. And they swear all of them did up, down, and sideways that nothing was done wrong there. And I believe them on this one. But you know what? It's been done before, allegedly. But you know what threw it off? One Belichick smart enough to know to tell his guys if you see it happen and jump off sides. I think there was a little bit of play of that. Because you can pull somebody outside inadvertently. And you know what really did it in? Mm. It's Bill. Bill, if I'm not mistaken, probably went to the referee, said, watch the reaction. That's what I was going to say here. He, he's talking to them all the time. And it's not complaining. It's not something that happened before. He's prepping them for something that's about to come. Now, every coach does this. Belichick's not unique. Nope. Okay, uh, We've talked about it with Joey Porter Jr. 
the way you work the refs, you keep watch that. Watch that twenty four. Watch that. He's grabby. He's pulling. A, he's got a. He's got a fistful of shirt every time yeah. he's running down the field. You know, there's Pre- Presley Harvin's reaction and celebration contributed a lot more to the flag than the actual head snap. And I'm not blaming Presley, but what I'm saying that excessive celebration proved Belichick's point right. Yeah, he wasn't the only one, Presley, but Presley was first and the most visible. Yeah. Yeah. They they really believe they got it. And they, they did. They believe they got it. Nick Herbig was jumping around back there too. They 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 had him. They did have him. I yeah, think and, it, and it and led to, to it. have it backfire was a was a pretty tough moment in the game. That said, they stunk. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's they didn't lose because of any call. They lost because they gave up 21 points to Bailey Zappi. Facts. So, all right. Well, let's do it again Monday, Moan. Have yourself a I'll good be here. weekend. Have Plan on this weekend. conversation. Yes. We're banking uh, on it. Oh, man. Monday, I'm in Miami. Monday? Well, then we'll do it Tuesday. Or you'll hook up, we'll hook up Monday. We'll let everybody know. Let's reconvene. Okay. All right. I have all my equipment. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.